Thank you. Uh, welcome on our session. Uh, this is the session which uh, is about the optimized KPI reporting using Power BI metrics. I'm Bartolomei Gracek. Together with me is... Uh, and I'm Lars. Lars, uh, yeah. Let me uh, in shortly introduce myself and then Lars will tell in a few words what he's doing. Uh, I'm working as a cloud solution architect focusing on data and analytics, so which means that daily basis I'm trying to help my customers to understand that the journey of uh, Migrating data and analytics solutions to the cloud doesn't need to be complicated. It even can be quite fun. Uh, working with the customers here in Poland, also in the central and middle, uh, middle Europe, or the central, eastern, middle, uh, middle east and Africa recently, it's quite new for me. So still learning what's uh, behind this. However, uh, it's like a quite good uh, exposure for the really interesting projects. I'm also part of the extension of the team, which Lars is, so I'm giving to Lars some space to yes. introduce himself. So I, uh, I'm a program manager in the team at Microsoft that we today call Power BI Cosmo Advisory Team, or PBI CAT for short. And that means that I uh, work with and support customers in the Nordics, Eastern Europe, Italy and uh, Spain, so I work uh, with uh, Bartek on these Eastern European customers. Uh, and I have been with Microsoft since January 2014, so those of you who know the history of Power BI, that was just before we launched the first, let's say, not very successful version of Power BI, uh, but uh, the past, yeah, at least five years have been a, a great uh, ride with Power BI. Uh, at Microsoft. And for the audience online, we will take questions, uh, but uh, we will try to answer them uh, after, the in the end. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, let's, uh, let's start, let's kick off. Uh, Lars has a quite long part of demonstration for you, so we just want to make sure we will be able to deliver what we planned. Uh, so let the, let's take questions at the end. So guys, let's start from very, very beginning, the short agenda, so Power BI metrics, what and how. So I will explain in few words uh, what, what are the scenarios when you can look into the metrics, how the metrics were created, what is, uh, let's say, basics of uh, defining the metrics, and then Lars will take you through the creating scorecard, creating metrics, organize them, consume metrics, and at the end I will cover the part with the metrics and integrations, which means uh, uh, working with metrics and, for example, uh, Power, B, uh, Power Automate. And then a few words about licensing requirement because it's not so obvious that every single functionality which we are presenting is available in Power BI Pro Premium. So we will, let's say, uh, explain this in details how you can work with the metrics. Okay, guys. So let me start with uh, what and how. Uh, when we are talking with Power BI metrics or Maybe you are still familiar with the name of the goals, which were introduced at the beginning. So just a confusion, goals, right, right now it's the same, it's about the metrics. Uh, metrics is, is something which is a data-driven, collaborative and adaptable way to measure key business metrics. Which means you, if you have any kind of KPI you want to show, you want to uh, measure, you want to uh, see the trend of, or the changes of the, of the, of the metrics, then it's a good idea to consider this functionality in Power BI. Of course, it's still possible to achieve similar functionality with some workarounds, some visualizations, some KPIs on the dashboards and so on, but this is the functionality which, was de uh, which is dedicated and was created definitely for this. Uh, the very interesting part of this is that this is fully driven by data. At the beginning, when the goals or metrics were introduced, they were, let's say, quite manual one and everything was like uh, you need to create one, you need to update them, you need to, you need to verify if, if the value is correct. Now they are fully d driven by data, you can connect them with data and Lars will be showing this in a second. Second thing is that they were built as a extension or the uh, support for teams. If you are working on any kind of project, you want to for sure see what's happening behind the uh, fundamental metrics which are defined. So are we at, uh, on risk with something? Are we on track? Uh, uh, are we delayed with something? So that's an idea to have a visibility on the team, let's say, level, how we are going in every single area which is defined. Uh, of course, it's about taking actions. So if something is delayed, if something is okay, if we finish everything on time, maybe we can uh, make something automatic 
And based on this metric, we can start another process. We can pass, pass this information somewhere. That's why it's uh, automated action and can be used for this. So when we are talking about uh, metrics itself, it's quite easy to create scorecards uh, for KPIs and uh, we are starting with this. Then we are utilizing the data that already exists in Power BI reports. So it, does, it means that if you want to work with metrics, you not, don't necessarily need to define something from scratch. If you already have a data set, if you already have a data there, you can use it to connect with the metrics and provide this uh, values which, uh, which you want to uh, monitor and you want to uh, see on the, on the defined metrics uh, part. Uh, then, of course, tracking the progress uh, for KPIs uh, and checking and comments, it's something which is optional, but it's very useful. So it's not about only defining the metric itself and see, okay, this is the value A and this is the value B and we see that this value change over the time. It's also about collaboration. It's also about giving uh, users opportunity to provide additional information over the metric. So if you see, for example, that we are at risk on something, maybe someone can comment what can we do, why, it's, uh, why we are at risk. So this is a collaborative approach to using the metrics. Uh, as mentioned, it's optional, but it's uh, really insightful information when we are using this at a uh, daily basis. So, in details, how it works and how it's defined, uh, you know, we have something which is, uh, let's say, the name we are using, then uh, the KPI and the element is assigned to someone, which means that uh, this is the responsible person for the, for the area. We have the status, which I mentioned, uh, the progress, trend, and due date. So these are the elements which need to be provided or should be provided to have a, a full satisfaction and uh, full usage of the metrics which are defined. Of course, the next step, and Lars will be showing this, it's how we will organize this, how we will use them on a daily basis, how we will be, you know, tracking the progress, what's the interesting area for us. So we will have a look into this, and I believe you will see that it's uh, really, really easy to use on a daily basis. There is one very, very important thing which needs to be considered when it comes to metrics. Uh, if we are defining them, then we are starting with scorecard, then doing some kind of draft, review, and publish the, the element. Of course, the second part of it is working with the checking, so collect notes, review, improve, adjust, automate, and so on. So it's like a two-phase work. Now, first, it's like to think what we want to define, and we are starting defining. Then there is a life cycle of using this on a daily basis, adjusting, uh, uh, editing, improving, and so on, and so on. But how you can, let's say, measure something. It's very important to understand that they should be used on daily basis with some kind of rhythm of business, monthly business reviews, weekly service uh, review, because you need to have a goal to use these metrics. If you, know, if you are not doing the, let's say, recurring review of, uh, of the metric, it can be <laughs> quite hard to, to, to have them and track them and, uh, and, and see the progress. So it, it should, let's say, support your weekly, daily activities and just give you the information with the data provided uh, behind of this. That's why it's so important to use specific methodologies when you are trying to define the, uh, the metric itself. So it should be measurable, it should be achievable, and it should, uh, should have a deadline. And as you see already in the short presentation, these all elements are there in the metrics. So you need to define it. You need to have a, uh, let's say, the goal into which you are going. You, need, you have the current value, and then you have a deadline, and this deadline is like a, a measuring element of all, all, all the progress. And there are a few methodologies, how to define the approach to goal settings, tracking, and, and, and so on. Uh, you can use the management by objects. You can measure it, enable, and have a deadline. Uh, approach, so MAD, uh, there is a specific measure of achievable and relevant time bounds, which is a smart, and so on and so on. So it's about choosing the right approach, having in mind what we want to define, and then based on this, using the metrics approach uh, in Power BI to provide this uh, specific functionality. And let me pass to what Lars. Lars will show you the short, short uh, demo of uh, let's say, end state, so how the yeah. measures are, uh, metrics are working, and then we will go through step-by-step -step approach. Yes, so um, you're not seeing my screen, which is not good. 
Uh, why? It was not the best idea to have a virtual desktop. So. <laughs> okay. Um, I will uh, revert to this. Then um, two seconds. Uh, Okay, uh, but what I, uh, I will just spin up my demo environment here again. So what I will show you now is just a quick demo of, uh, of a, a finalized scorecard, and I will actually show you that in Teams, um, because the way we want consumers to, uh, to use Power BI, if possible, is actually to use uh, the, the Power BI app inside Teams, because it gives uh, the consumer normally a better experience, because then you're staying in the application where you are, are doing a lot of your work. So uh, if you have never seen uh, Power BI inside Teams before, this is what it looks like, very similar to the Power BI service, but a little different and uh, more consumer friendly. So we don't have this whole long navigation on the left-hand side, we have what is needed. And when you click on something, so for instance, metrics, uh, then I have all my scorecards, I have my demo scorecard, then it opens up my, my scorecard in this case in the whole uh, screen, whereas if you do it in the service, unless you collapse the, the left navigation, it will, will still be there. So this is a, a scorecard that we created uh, up front. And uh, you can see here that we have uh, a scorecard that's called revenue that is on track. If we expand this, then we have some uh, uh, sub metrics here for different regions. And we can see that uh, even though that our total uh, 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 KPI for revenue is on track, we do have two regions that are actually behind. What you can do on a scorecard uh, here for, for a metric like revenue, if you want to know more about it, then you can click on uh, this little icon and that will actually open the, the report where this data resides. So now I'm owing the report and here I can uh, do some slicing and dicing that you know from your normal Power BI report. I'm not going to uh, drill into that uh, for now. What you can also do, uh, like Bartek mentioned, is you can do uh, check-ins. Uh, so when I click on my, my revenue here, then I can open some details and I can actually see how it has evolved. Uh, this particular metric is a year to date. That's why it's uh, looking a little funny here at the year end. Then it drops to, uh, to basically nothing. Uh, I can do check-in. So I can do a check-in here for uh, a specific date. Uh, and uh, this is the latest date of, of the data. I can include a note saying uh, we are on track. Uh, and then I can tag people if, if needed. I have a Paul in this demo environment here. I can tag him. And for this particular uh, KPI, I cannot change the number because that is what we call a connected, connected metric. We'll come back to that in a second. So that comes from data. And my status over here, that's uh, defined by some rules, so I'm not able to change this status. But if it was, uh, if I had the option to do it, then, then I, I could do it as well. So I can click Save, and then everyone who has access to, uh, to this scorecard and this KPI can go in here and see uh, what uh, notes that has been made uh, in, in the past. Good. This was a... a quick introduction to what a scorecard, final scorecard looks like. So what I will do now is that I will have a few slides that are presenting what, uh, how to build a scorecard in KPIs, and then I will take you through the whole process of creating a scorecard to, uh, to consume again in the end. So uh, when we are f finished here, then you should be able to go home and start creating your own uh, scorecards and metrics. So the basic thing is that in order to use metrics, you need to create a scorecard. And scorecards are always created in the Power BI service. Uh, it is possible to create them in Power BI Desktop, but then you'll be using the metrics visual, which needs to be connected to the service. So it's, it's something that is living in the service. It's not a desktop uh, feature. Then on a scorecard, we have uh, three general settings. Uh, I'll talk about those uh, when I do my demo. It's about the details on the, on the scorecard. It's about permissions to the KPIs in the scorecard. And then it's about these uh, statuses that you have. So um, when you have uh, built a scorecard, 
scorecard, then you of course should be able to share it with someone in your organization. And sharing scorecards is basically the same as sharing any other Power BI uh, content. So if you are admin member or contributor, then you have the option to edit the scorecard. If you have the viewer permission on the scorecard, then you'll be able to see all the scorecards in, in the particular workspace. But you can also share it uh, using the, the ordinary share function. So of course, it's important that you know who uh, should have access to the scorecards. And if we relate, relate the sharing part to permissions, which we'll talk about uh, a little later, then you can actually control which KPI should be available to which uh, groups of users. So let's take a look at how you actually create a, a scorecard. That's pretty simple. Um, so I will go in my browser again. So now I will do it in the Power BI service. I could actually do this in, uh, in uh, uh, Teams as well, but I have this workspace called SQL Day 2023. So in my workspace, I can click here, New, and then New Scorecard. So when I create a new scorecard, by default, it will be Untitled Scorecard. We will create a SQL Day. Oh, better spell it the correct way. 2023 20, scorecard here. And then on the scorecard, when I'm in edit mode, I can go into the settings, and then you can see these uh, three uh, general settings on the scorecard. There are some details, a name, a description, who should be contact persons, and the time zone. And the time zone is, is very relevant for your deadlines if you are a global organization and you have people in different time zones. And then there's also this enable scorecard notification in Teams. So if you don't want notification in Teams, then you should uh, disable this. We have the permission part. We'll uh, look at this uh, in more detail a little later, but this is where you can uh, configure who should have access to which KPIs. And then we have the statuses. So this is the default status that comes with every scorecard. You can change uh, the colors if you like, you can change the names, you can reorder, and you can make your own uh, status selection here if, if you want. Good, that was uh, very basic of creating a scorecard. Now I just created the scorecard. I haven't created any KPIs yet, but as you can see here, or any metrics, but I'm ready to do that now. But before I go into that part, I will just explain a little bit about what you need. Bartek has already told you some of it, so we can skip or go through it pretty fast. So each metric that you create has a number of things that it needs to have, and there are a few optional things. So it needs to have a name. So if you don't have, give it a name, it's, it's pretty hard to know what you're dealing with. Then it needs to have at least uh, one uh, owner, or it's actually optional, but if you don't have an owner, well, then you don't know who to contact. And on a scorecard, you can have many, many uh, metrics, and you can have different owners for each uh, metric, and you can have multiple owners as well. Then it needs to have a value. This is the current value. So if it would be your sales, then you would like to know what is uh, the current sales. And this is, this is mandatory. Then we have uh, a target. Uh, and if you want to know how close you are to target, then you will probably include the target in most of your metrics. But it is actually optional. So, so there may be some metrics or KPIs you want to track where you don't have a, a target value. Then there is this uh, status. And uh, that's also uh, mandatory, but it can just be, uh, be blank, so uh, you, you don't track it. But as you'll see when we develop the scorecard and when you want to use it, uh, using some uh, good rules about your statuses will actually help the consumption of, uh, of the scorecard uh, a lot. Then it needs to have a start date. It will by default be today's date and then it will have an end date, and then we'll, that will by default be a month from now. But of course, you can always change that. Um, and this is uh, what it looks like, as you also saw in my scorecard. Uh, and we will do this in a, in a second. Um, then we have uh, basically uh, four different types of metrics, and I will show you how to create all four of them. So one metric is a manual metric. Uh, and uh, as we said in the beginning, uh, the benefits of using Power BI metrics is that it's data-driven. A manual metric is something that you need to uh, type in manually. Uh, of course, it is data, but it's not driven by any data uh, automatically. But that is an option uh, 
Then we have the connected metrics, which is probably what you want to use the most, which is where you connect your uh, metric to uh, some data in, uh, in one or more of your Power BI reports. Then we have submetrics. I already showed you uh, the revenue part where we had uh, total revenue and then we had revenue for different regions. So uh, that is how it relates. And then we have link metrics. So link metrics is taking a metric in the scorecard I'm going to create in a second that actually uh, is created in a different scorecard. So if you have like a master scorecard with the let's say the 10 most important KPIs in your organization and you actually want to expose those uh, across many different scorecards in the organization, then you can use this uh, link metrics uh, capability. Then we have the statuses. We already talked about that. So it's an easy way to see uh, if we're on track or not. Uh, and uh, each scorecard uh, can have different statuses. So if, uh, if you have special kinds of KPIs that you uh, need to track, then you can uh, define them yourself. And uh, as I said, you can either update them manually or you can uh, use rules. Um, and I will also show you both. Then uh, permissions. Um, I already talked about this. So this is where you can configure who should be able to see which KPIs. Um, this is an example of what the, the configuration looks like. So here I have sales and I have region north, region south. And you can see that uh, um, the the uh, update uh, or everyone can view, uh, but they are only able to update the current status for the uh, NPS, the Net Promoter Score. It's viewable, but you can only update the, the status. And for the cost, it's viewable, and you can only update the notes. And for the last one, employee satisfaction, you're only able to view this uh, with the person who belongs to this role. So you can, of course, make this very complex if you like. Uh, I would recommend keeping it as simple as possible, but if you need granular control of what people can actually view and what they can, can change uh, when they check in, then you can uh, configure that. Yeah, so this is uh, what I just told you, uh, what they can do on the, the, the check-in. Uh, yeah, so this set for all is if you have uh, submetrics, then uh, it will automatically inherit all the, the permissions on the, the parent metric that will be um, yeah, spread out to the submetrics. Uh, there's a default role, uh, default permission, uh, which is applicable if nothing else is configured. I will not have time to go through the whole configuration of the metrics, but what I'm going to say is that when you create a scorecard, then the default role will have you to all your metrics. So what you need to do if you want your own custom uh, permissions uh, applied, then you have to change this default role so that they cannot view any metrics because else they will be able to view all the metrics. And then when you try to figure out why they can actually view all the metrics now that you assign them to a role where they can only see one metric, that is because you need to change the default role. Good. Then let's look at how we're actually creating uh, some content in the scorecard here. Uh, oh, I need to go out here. So, um, how are we doing on time? 25 minutes. Okay, so we are uh, we created this uh, SQL Day 2023 scorecard. So let's have some metrics here that are relevant for this, and I will show you uh, these four types of um, uh, metrics that you can actually create. So let's have the first one that we call. Uh, Let's call it mood of the day. So here, by default, I'm logged in as the user Rachel, but I can also add an other owner. Uh, you saw that I have Paul. And this one will be a manual metric. So uh, I think we are all doing pretty good. We had a party last night. Uh, so the mood is uh, 9, and uh, let's say the target is 10. Then I can set the status here. Is for this one, I'm gonna just going to leave it as default, so it means not started. Um, it really doesn't matter, and then you can see the start and the end date. Then when I click Save to this uh, metric, then you will notice that now I have my first metric created, and I can actually see uh, the progress. Um, and some of you will probably say, okay, 
I would actually like to see the, the trend on this one uh, because that is uh, normally how we actually see if we are, are doing good or doing bad. But I only entered one, uh, one check-in for this metric when I created it today. So it means that there's no trend yet. So when you do a manual metric, then you need to, uh, to add a new check-in. So let's see for yesterday, the 9th, Let's say that the mood was seven, uh, click save, and then you will start seeing a trend. And now I have two data points in here and that's, uh, that's how I can actually see a trend. Then I will create a connected, connected metric. So the first metric is the default one when I have created my scorecard. In order to create a new one, I go up here in the right hand corner and click new, new metric. And here I will call this uh, metric registrations. So uh, we'll keep Rachel as the owner. And this time I'm not going to enter a manual value, but this time I'm going to connect my uh, metric to uh, some data in a report. So I click setup and then I click connect to data. And now I need to locate the report where I uh, have the data I want to connect to. So this is the reason. So this is all the, the Power BI reports that uh, this user has access to. I will use this uh, Northwind report SQL Day 2023. Click on this, click Next. And in this report, I have a number of uh, pages and I have one that is called Registrations. And when I click on this, this visualization, I have uh, two measures. I have one that is called registration year to date, and then I have uh, a measure called registrations year to date last year. So for my current measure, I will use the registration year to date. So I'm not going to change anything else. Uh, I would like to track all data in this time series so I actually see the trend. Um, so I click connect to data here and then I will start seeing the, the latest number in my data. And for my target, I'll do the same. Click connect to data, go into the same report. And in this case, I'm assuming that my target is number of uh, registrations uh, last year. So I will use the last year as my target. Um, and uh, then I can see now that I'm actually uh, yeah, doing better this year than last year. And this is some numbers that I just came up with. I have no idea whether they are correct or not, uh, probably not. Um, and then uh, I have defined a, a connected metric now. So when I click save here, then you will see my trend is based on the data that is in my uh, uh, data, data set. Good. I have still not uh, talked or, or done anything about um, uh, the, the status because that's what I want to show you uh, in the next part here. And here I want to do uh, uh, show you how to create submetrics. Uh, to create submetrics, again, I want to create a new metric. And this metric is going to be called uh, SQL Day Evaluation. And I have been a little lazy, so I haven't done a data set. So this will also be uh, some manual metrics, but of course you could connect it to data. Because I want to create submetrics, I need to have uh, one uh, parent metric, which is going to be this SQL data evaluation. So I save this, and once this is saved, then on uh, this uh, metric, I convert that into a parent metric by clicking these uh, more options, and then say new submetric. And I will have two submetrics here. So my first submetrics will be for workshops. And let's just say that the evaluation for workshops was seven uh, and my target was 10. Um, and then I will save this. Uh, and then my other submetrics will be sessions. And here my, uh, my current value is eight. And just for demo purposes, I will set this target to nine. So now I have two submetrics. Uh, current value uh, is seven and eight, and the targets are different. So for the parent metric, I would like to actually do use this roll-up capability uh, that works with the submetric. So I need to edit it. So if you paid attention when I created my other uh, metrics, I have this thing called use submetrics. So that's an automatic roll-up based on all the submetrics for, for this parent metric. And in this case, 
I want to use the average uh, because it's an evaluation score. I could also use some minimum or maximum. But I'll do average here, and I will also do the average as uh, the, the target. So now when I click Save, I can actually see that my uh, parent matrix is doing an average of my two submetrics. And the last thing I want to do with these uh, submetrics is to define a, a status rule so that I can actually easy see if I'm on track or, or not. If I want to, if I go into an individual metric here, I can set up status rules. And that works fine, but I have to do that manually on each metric. If I'm defining the same rules for multiple metrics, then you can select multiple metrics out here. So this is my parent metrics and my two submetrics, and then I can go to my menu, say edit, and then I have option to, uh, to do some edits, and one of the options I can do is I can set up status rules. So I will define three rules, and here it will just be one rule or one condition per rule. I can have multiple conditions. So in this case, I would like to say if my value is greater than 85% of the target, then it should be on track. If my value is greater than 75% of target, then it should be uh, at risk. And if the value is less than or equal to 75% of target, then we call it behind. Then I click Save Rules and Save to, uh, to editing the three metrics. And what you'll see now, hopefully, um, is that I have defined these uh, three statuses. Uh, and yeah, this is a live demo. So uh, I don't know. Now it's not responding. OK, we'll be a little patient. But these uh, three. Uh, um, Rules have now been applied to, uh, uh, to, to these uh, three metrics, and then the, the statuses will change. So if this is working as expected, which is, it's not, uh, then you should see um, that we have different uh, status. Oh, here it came. Uh, so going into read mode, I can now see that my uh, total one is at risk, my workshop is behind, and session is on track. Uh, so whenever data is updated, because I applied a rule, then uh, my status will automatically update. The last thing I, I want to do in here is to go in and create a link matrix, which is uh, still in, uh, in preview. Uh, but here I can click link metric, and then I need to navigate to another scorecard. I'll do this demo scorecard, and I will select my uh, project learn Power BI metrics, continue. And then I have this new metric added to, to this scorecard. And what you'll see is that this pen, this uh, edit icon, says that in order to uh, edit a link metric, I need to go to the source scorecard. Good. That's how you create a scorecard and create these uh, four different types of, uh, of metrics. So um, I think we're running out of time, but I'll quickly show you uh, uh, the um, uh, hold on, the, the permission part here. Uh, you already saw that in, um, where is it? Uh, I think it's here. No. Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, I'll go in my teams instead. So here, um, I can go into my settings. Uh, and set the permission, and I have defined a role that is called demo role, and I have assigned this demo role to uh, to Paul, and he can view some of the the cap of some of the metrics, and he can modify some of them. So if I log in as Paul, which I had prepared, but it didn't work with another desktop, so I'll just open Power BI here, um, then you will see that. This scorecard is the same, uh, and Paul, if I go here, uh, Paul is not able to view the uh, net promoter score, the employee health, and so on. He can only view user adoption and revenue, and then if I expand revenue, you can see that he can only see two of the, the submetrics. 
we don't have time to go into detail, but if, if, if he click on one of them, he only has permission to do uh, some, some parts of the chicken. Um, good. One last thing I want to show you here on uh, a scorecard uh, is the way you can... Um, uh, yeah, that we, uh, we actually need to go back to my presentation here. Sorry about that. So, um, so what you saw now is how to create the, um, a scorecard from scratch based on your manual data or your uh, data that you have in your reports. So the last part I'm going to cover, uh, and I have one small demo for this, is the organization and viewing and consumption of your metrics. Uh, it should be uh, pretty straightforward, but there's one thing that, uh, that needs a little uh, special explanation. So uh, you can organize your scorecard. So if you, if you don't like the way uh, that we from Microsoft uh, created them with the, the, the ordering, then you can actually remove some of your uh, columns in a scorecard. You can rearrange the columns orders, uh, and you can unhide and hide some of them. Uh, there are some, the progress and current, they cannot be hidden. Uh, and you also, of course, need to have your name uh, of the metric. So this is uh, the menu, what it looks like when you go in and, and want to change something. And this is also an option, so you can go in and select which uh, columns that you actually want in your scorecard. You can also do what we call a move of a scorecard, and that's moving a scorecard from the workspace where you created it to another workspace. So if you go into the metrics section in Power BI and create a new scorecard, then by default it will uh, be created in my workspace, which is not appropriate for, for enterprise usage. So in that case, you will want to move that to, to another scorecard. But if you create the scorecard the way I showed you, then it will be created in the workspace where you actually created it. You also have the option to copy a scorecard, and that can be uh, useful if you like have a template scorecard with your own defined status rules, or not status rules, but statuses, uh, and then you can uh, copy that to, to um, another uh, scorecard. The consumption of metrics should be pretty straightforward. You can consume the metrics in a scorecard. You can consume them in the metrics uh, visual in uh, in yeah, in a report, uh, and then you can consume using hierarchy. And the hierarchy part is a little tricky, and I will show you that part. Uh, what I want to say about the, the visual is that if you want to customize your uh, scorecard with your own colors uh, and stuff like that, that's what you can do with the, the metrics visual. You cannot do that in the, let's say, the ordinary scorecard in the Power BI service. But the hierarchy part is... Uh, First of all, in order to use the hierarchy part, you need to create uh, some connected metrics and define a hierarchy. Um, we don't have time to go into uh, how you do that, but um, here, so my demo scorecard here. So I have defined a hierarchy here with uh, some uh, customer and employees. And what you'll see here is that if I click for Europe, then all my metrics that is related to this Europe hierarchy will now be uh, shown. So my project learn Power BI Basic is not connected to my uh, to my, my hierarchy, so so that it's blank. If I expand revenue, then Europe uh, will show uh, revenue for for these. So this is one way to use the hierarchy. This is pretty basic, but still uh, still powerful. But what you can do, which is in here. So in order to, to use hierarchies in a more explorative way is to go into this uh, view. So by default, it's list view. But if you go into the heat map view instead, then we are actually showing uh, the different statuses of your uh, metrics uh, in your hierarchy. So here I'm showing my uh, the totals, and then I'm showing for Europe. Then I can expand, I can add my North America, my South America. And now I can easily see, based on the, the color coding in here, uh, how am I doing on my uh, totals. And for instance, I can see here that for uh, revenue in Eastern, I'm in total, I'm on track, but uh, I can actually see that South America is, uh, is behind. So this is where I probably should take action. 
Um, and I can expand this uh, all the way down here, so I could, I'm not going to do all of it, but I, I can add all the countries that I want, and then I see all my countries in, uh, in this heat map view. So, uh, this is a very powerful way of actually getting an overview of how you are doing on your different metrics that you have defined. Um, one thing I want to say about this uh, hierarchy part, and uh, Bartek will also comment on that in the licensing part, that is the only feature in uh, metrics that is a premium feature, um, but the rest is available for, for Pro as well. That was um, all I had time for, so now uh, Bartek will cover the sure, last thank few you, bits. So let's go through the metrics and integrations because as you saw uh, in last presentation, it's, it can be a little bit tricky to create all these uh, uh, metrics and uh, then follow them. Of course, following them and consuming them, it's a much easier part. You have a Teams integration and it was uh, already shown that uh, this Teams integration is really created for business users. It's the best way to consume the metrics and even the experience, it's much more better than going through the, through the Power BI portal, which is great, but there are any, uh, there are more, let's say, bunch of integrations which, uh, which were introduced and which we, can, which we can use to create the scorecard and work with them. The first of, uh, of them is uh, metrics and Power Automate uh, integration, which means that Power Automate can be used to perform all the operations, almost all the operations, which Lars was uh, showing uh, uh, in a manual way, which means you can use the Power Automate to create a scorecard, then inside this uh, you are providing the information about the workspace, about the name and the description, and that, that's the first step. And based on this, uh, scorecard, then you are going to create all the metrics which are inside your, uh, your scorecard which was defined. So having in mind that the metrics can be defined quite dynamically, they can change over time, they can be added over the project progress and they can uh, be, uh, you know, uh, defined by different owners, different person, people who are responsible for them, it can be quite uh, interesting approach when you have a manual trigger or any automatic trigger based, for example, on the uh, on some kind of action, then the goal can be created. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that still here it's a create goal, not a create metric, but it's, uh, you know, by design. <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep it here. Uh, it's a preview, so potentially in the GA it will have... Uh, That's right actually name. one of the reasons why it's still in preview, is because yeah, exactly. we need to change the name. <laughs> exactly, but it also shows that uh, we are going, let's say, step by step with implementations of the metrics uh, well, goals which, which, were, uh, which were named earlier. So all the elements like the owner, the values, the start date, end date, completion, uh, these are the elements which can be provided by Power Automate. Uh, of course, we need to prepare this automation, we need to create this flow. However, if this is something uh, uh, on which we want to, you know, create our, our um, let's say, flow of the, of, the, of the metrics creation, then it's, uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite interesting approach. Uh, in my opinion, this uh, check-in is also something which can be really nice automated. Of course, uh, once again, user can go there and provide the check-in, but having in mind that the project, for example, is uh, run through some kind of project management tools, then based on the project management values which we have, or the assignments, or the tasks, uh, we can trigger the option to create a, a check-in inside our metrics and provide this information, uh, including, of course, notes and information, then update them, and so on and so on. So update the metric uh, is also one of the, of the functionalities, and very important one, get the metrics. So if we already have these metrics defined, and we want to move them to external system, we want to read them, we want to perform some action, another action, another step in Power Automate, based on the metric value, then we can just extract this value and provide next steps and some kind of decision points uh, in our Power Automate uh, functionality. Uh, the same with the check-ins and the informations which are provided by the users. So, for example, based on this, we will also see what users are talking and, and uh, how they are commenting what's uh, going on. Uh, of course, the very important part is the triggering, so every time the metric changes, uh, status, owner, and so on, there, also, there is also an opportunity to run the Power Automate uh, flow, uh, which can be, once again, a good uh, starting point to send some notification, provide some information to the owners. Uh, every single time the 
value which will uh, which which is changed, uh, then we ha we are sending, for example, the information to the owner, so the he or she doesn't need to go every single time to the portal or to the um, to the teams to see the value. Of course, uh, if it's uh, on track, then we can <laughs> definitely um, congratulate the person, or if it's a uh, uh, let's say uh, some kind of uh, overdue or delay uh, which which we see then we can perform totally different action for example do a automatic escalation based on based on the on the metric so i believe it's uh, all about understanding the goals uh, which we want to achieve and once again uh, the first the very first star, uh, starting point which which i mentioned was the definition of the of the goals and definition of the of the metrics. So if we want if we know what we want to address with with this functionality, then for example, for for sure we'll find a, a good scenario and good for, uh, good way to, to to work with the with the metrics itself. Uh, also, when we are running the project, it's sometimes important to change the owners or assign the owners of, uh, to, to the to metrics which are defined. Uh, once again, it's an option uh, to automate this uh, functionality and uh, use it on a daily basis. Uh, worth to remember that still in preview, so it's like a, a work in progress. You can test it, you can use it, you can verify, but uh, be aware that there can be some, uh, let's say, uh, Shocking points, or or we need to we need to be careful when it comes to to, to using the preview uh, functionality. Also, it's quite uh, important that uh, Microsoft, uh, when when we are creating or we are uh, designing the functionalities, almost every time we are thinking about how to integrate with external systems by API. And in this case, Metrics got a API as uh, almost every single functionality right now in Power BI, which means you can you can perform operations from your external applications. You can integrate your external living systems with uh, with uh, Power BI Metrics. The same, for example, with the CRM or with the uh, with other uh, ServiceNow solutions, uh, which uh, which are used by by the organization on the daily uh, basis. We'll not be showing you the REST API here, but uh, make sure you will check check them. The functionality, uh, almost all the elements which we mentioned today, like the update, delay, uh, uh, get values, statuses, and so on, are available through the API. It's about uh, uh, you know registering the right uh, permissions, right application, and then work with the API uh, itself. And uh, quite interesting thing, of course, Power BI is more business users oriented. So we are also investing in the integration of Power BI and Viva Goals. So uh, this is one of the uh, quite nice uh, ways how you can, for example, track uh, elements uh, uh, which, are, which are collected by Viva, Viva Goals and then, uh, then uh, pass them or connect them with the Power BI functionalities, like for example, number of unique visitors, reach target or um, uh, behind the target, and then uh, uh, some kind of analysis, uh, analytics of the, of the, for example, website visit can be, can be tracked in Power BI based on the values which are, uh, which are gathered from the, from the Viva Goals uh, functionality. So that's, uh, that's the area in where Power BI is integrated. We can expect more, we can, we can see much uh, deeper integration with other uh, ecosystem of Microsoft solutions, especially Office and now let's go to the metric licensing and requirements. So as already uh, Lars mentioned, uh, when we want to use the metrics, it's quite easy to start. Uh, the only feature which, is, uh, which requires the premium functionality is the hierarchy uh, metrics. Every other functionality in metrics is available for the pro uh, users, which means if you have pro users, premium per, use, uh, premium per user functionality uh, license, then you can fully utilize the metrics uh, functionality. The good thing is also that if you have a, uh, if, if you have a premium per uh, user, uh, then you can, of course, uh, uh, author share scorecard metrics. If you have users uh, who are uh, premium per capacity users, which means free users accessing the uh, workspace, which are the premium one, then they can view scorecards and metrics. So they are not able to perform any operations, but this is quite similar to the standard approach of, of the free users in the premium uh, capacity. And uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's worth uh, to, to, to see this and, and worth to uh, remember that there is no other, let's say, additional investment needed in the licensing just to start using the uh, metrics. 
And guys, that was a goal to, of this session to show you how the metrics, how you can start with the metrics, how you can use them. Uh, I still think that the metrics area is, uh, let's say, underutilized a little bit right now. <laughs> we see that the, the, the let's say, interest is growing in this area and uh, uh, that's why we, we wanted to share this functionality and uh, in a few, let's say, minutes show you how you can uh, easily start using metrics on daily uh, basis. Thank you very much for attending this, the session. If you have any questions, that's a great moment to ask them. Uh, not necessarily only related to metrics, uh, as, as Lars mentioned at the beginning, he is uh, part of the Power BI CAT team, which means uh, nice experience from the biggest customers around the world <laughs> is in his, it's in his hands. So don't hesitate to ask the questions right now. Okay, we've got four questions. Some of them uh, might be, you know, answered previously. Okay. Uh, first one, can scorecards also be included in an app to prevent people from having access to the workspace, but only to the app? Yes, you can also add, um, I can show you, I think you can, um, if I go into this workspace where we created here and create a new app, um, and add content, then uh, it, it shows as a report in here, but it is actually, as you see by the name, it's my scorecard. So when I add this, then it's, it's my scorecard in, um, in, in the, the app. Yeah. But uh, if you want to add a scorecard in an app, you can also, let me just show you that, <clears throat> um, you can also add the, the scorecard as a self directly in, um, um, in a report. Uh, and I, this one, no, I, I'm not this one. Yeah. So th this is an example of how I embedded my scorecard inside a visual. So you can see this is the scorecard that I showed in the beginning. And here it has custom <laughs> colors, uh, which probably would be a better way to embed it in an app if you, you want more control over it. Okay, the second one. What? Yes. So, yeah, so if we should pretty, we still have seven minutes. So here, when I click on, uh, on this, then I can do my check-in. Uh, maybe it's not the prettiest colors, but, but I can do everything in here. If I have on my regional sales here, I have uh, four individual metrics that I added to, uh, to this particular uh, report page. And in here, I can also do my, my check-in. Then it will take me as you can see here, to this specific metric in the scorecard. I can do my check-in if I'm allowed to do it. Uh, make a note, uh, check in on report, uh, save it. Uh, something went wrong, great. Uh, normally it works, and then I can go back to my report. So, so the way it's integrated is that it is using the metrics, uh, and you can do all the, the check-in uh, that, that you like. You need to have uh, have permission on the metric to do a check-in. No, you don't need permission to to the workspace. You, you need to have access to the scorecard, and then to the the permissions to to do check-in on uh, on the individual metric in order to do it. Okay. Is it possible to use RLS on scorecard? For example, let's, see, let's say John, see only his sale and only his target, and let's say Carol, see her sales and target. Yeah, so uh, our last <laughs> role in security uh, it does not apply on, on scorecards. So you will, if you wanna use uh, that security, then you will need to do that with the permissions on the scorecards and metrics. So the, it is the author of the scorecard. In this case, I've been demoing as Rachel, uh, and I'm exposing whatever Rachel has, has permission to view. Uh, 
Um, there are not any uh, specific plans, no. Um, it's, it's complicated <laughs> to, to do that. Um, so right now, it's not in the plans. Okay. Will users that do not have permission to the data set see the data of the metric connected to the data set? So the users who... Uh, will users that do not have permission to the data set see the data of the metric connected to the data set? Yeah, so if you have the view permission to the scorecard, then you will be able to see. Uh, but if I go into uh, this, so if, if I go in here on the scorecard and click on this report, if I don't have permission to view this report, then I will, it, it inherits the same uh, permissions as ordinary in Power BI, and then I will be prompted to request access. But I will still be able to see the metric. But I, will, I may not be able to see the underlying report. That requires that I have uh, read access to the report. OK. The next one. Is there a way to create a metric in a Power Automate and link it to a Power BI measure in a specific report? I mean, without going through the manual process of linking metric to particular visual. That's a good question. I, I actually don't think so. I cannot remember if we look at... Uh, this is something we need to check. Uh, the Power Automate functionality right now, as, as mentioned, is in preview. So I yeah. believe it's... Uh, it, uh, it is somehow possible in near future, but, but right now, uh, let us check and, and uh, back with the, with, the, with the answer. So if uh, someone wants uh, to follow up, uh, please send us an email or connect us on, on, on LinkedIn and we will back with the, uh, with the answer to you. Yeah, the creation here in Power Automate today to create a, a goal or metric, that is for a manual yeah. metric. Okay, the next question. Can we have just a brief overview of the differences between Power BI metrics and Viva goals? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, first of all, one of the reasons or the main reason that the Power BI goals was renamed to Power BI metrics was because we introduced Viva goals. Um, and um, yeah, to be honest, I don't have the details insights into Viva goals, but Viva goals covers more than uh, yeah, let's say data bound uh, metrics. So it's more like this OKR reporting. So um, it is, it's much broader and it's part of the whole Viva suite. Um, and at the same time, it, it is overlapping. So you could have a, a metric or a KPI or a goal that could belong in both. Um, so I would it, say that this is a quite good analogy with the Azure Data Explorer dashboards comparing to Power BI. The functionality which is in specific uh, product or solution like IDX or the goals, it's somehow limited, it's dedicated for this particular area. When it comes to Power BI, it's always an extension and integration of many metrics, for example, in the same place, having a, let's say, more business intelligence approach than uh, easy to use uh, goals or KPIs inside the, the, the specific application. So pretty much, as mentioned, with the Data Explorer where, where we have uh, dashboards, which somehow are similar to dashboards in Power BI, but, but will be never as functional as the elements in Power BI itself. And the last question, are PBI free users able to add check-ins? So free users? Are PBI free users? Yeah. Um, according to the license rules, as uh, we just showed on the last slide, they are not allowed, but um, uh, we, we do not enforce all the licensing restrictions today. So if you share a scorecard and you give permission to do check-in, then a free user will probably be able to do check-in today. But at some point we will, uh, that's at least what the last update I had, we will enforce the rules so that free users will only be able to view uh, metrics, so they will need a pro license or premium per user to, to perform a check-in.
Yeah, and as far as I remember, also the free users has some functionality in their yeah. workspace. So if you are working in your own workspace and you are not collaborating with others, then the functionality of scorecard is also available for this user, but only limited to the my, my workspace area. But it is Power BI, so you never know what is happening tomorrow. Uh, and initially, when we launched uh, Power BI metrics in, in preview, it was a premium feature. And then it was changed in to become a, a, a pro feature. So, um, yeah. Um, I think the more voices from the users will be that, yeah. hey, guys, we need the check-ins for free users. Then the licensing team will be considering how to deal with this. Yeah. You also see this change in, uh, in the area of uh, pa paginated reports, for example, which were the premium features. And then they were moved to the, the yeah. pro functionality. So I believe. It's a good uh, uh, example of where you can raise a voice as a customer and uh, say, hey, Microsoft, maybe this should be a functionality for the free users as well. No more questions. OK, guys. Any questions from on-site user attendees? No? Not yet? OK, guys. So thank you very much once again. We are here if you want to ask any questions uh, directly. Thank you for being with us. And have a great uh, rest of the day and rest of the conference. Thank you very much.